So I don't, did you guys hear the U.S. Senate just eliminated its dress code, sweatshirts and hoodies and shorts. Fetterman got out of the vehicle that pulled up right in front of the Capitol mid-afternoon as the Senate returned from recess. He was wearing his familiar hoodie and gym shorts. Of all the things there is to discuss, worry about, debate about, and be concerned with, should we really care how a senator from Pennsylvania dresses in the United States Senate? Let me give you one word to that. Yes, it's important. Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. Welcome to the Afternoon Drive, the late edition, early evening. Glad to have you along. Thank you so much for joining us. Please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Once you are, like this video. Please share this video. It's how we get the word out that we're here. Please smack the bell, click the word all, so that you get notification of all of my rants, my ravings, and yes, my undeniable flawless reasonings. Are you familiar with the old adage, dress for success? I'm one of those people that I believe that you ought to be addressed appropriately for whatever the event is. For example, I don't wear a suit and tie to the beach, and I don't wear beach attire to a church service. Everything in its place. I understand that we are living in a much more casual society. If my mother were alive, she would basically say that we have become a society of slobs today. Uh, she would look at anything from Crocs to Hey Dudes and say, what is with you people? You can't put on regular shoes anymore. It's got to be slip-on plastic like they're slippers. Is this how you're going to live? She would have died and she would have raised holy, you know, at a school board meeting if I as a child ever brought home a notification from my teacher that we were having pajama day in school. She would have hit the roof. In fact, all of our mothers back in the day would have hit the roof, and that, of course, would have never happened. So I get that we are in a more casual society. Look, I'm sitting out here tonight. I'm not in a suit and tie, but then again, I'm not performing a funeral right now. I'm not conducting a wedding. I am not engaged in what would be called a serious type of ministry situation where it's important that I look professional so that I am given the respect that I am conveying to the people that I am with, that I am competent, that I am up to what it is that they need. What would you think if you got pulled over and the officer strolled up to the side of your car wearing flip-flops, a thong, and you know the vest from like he was in the village people? Uh, would you stick around and actually let him write you a ticket? Or would you basically laugh at him and take off? You know, there is this idea that how you dress, it has a lot to do with how you conduct your business. It has a lot to do with how people treat you. 1775, Congress met for the very first time. And since then, it has been, if you will, the tradition that they come in their business best because they are doing the business of the people. You think about what get, goes on in Congress, in particular the Senate. Wars are decided. Treaties are decided. Budgets are set. The future of our kids, the future of life in America, our laws, farming policies, Everything and anything that has to do with the economy, it all gets decided there. Don't you want to at least look at people and think that they've got all of their French fries and their Happy Meal going on intellectually and they're up to this job? You know, when you consider that John Fetterman is one out of a hundred votes in the United States Senate that decides a near $25 trillion budget. Let that sink in. 11,000 people, private citizens, have been elected to office since 1775 serving in the United States Congress. And all of them 
dressed for it. And I don't want to hear this about this stroke that he had, because really, if it comes down to that, I want to thank the state of Pennsylvania for giving us a mental defective. And I know this is the part where I'm supposed to pause and say, you know, we're sad that he has this injury and that he's got this debilitating issue that he's struggling with. I I'm done with all of the apologies. No, Pennsylvania. You absolutely turned this lunatic loose on the rest of us. We have to deal with this asinine scumbag thanks to you. Even when he wears his, it looks like a work dicky shirt. He looks like the guy coming out from uh, uh, the service area at uh, Jiffy Lube telling me that my oil change is done, but he noticed my air filter needs replacing. I mean, really, what is the deal Pennsylvania, you need to be able to take a mental cognitive test to prove to the rest of us that you're capable of casting a vote in the future because you have pawned this guy, this literal scumbag, off on the rest of us. And notice what's going on with these Democrats. Uh, female Democrats that are making sex tapes and have their own sex channels on Pornhub to get a little cash on the side. One guy who was running as a Democrat for something from New York, he went ahead and engaged in uh, paid sex and made a video of it because he wanted to show that he was not discriminatory against sex workers. What are you The Fetterman thing wearing the hoodie and the shorts is a picture of the fact we have zero shame in this country anymore. We have no sense of right and wrong and decorum. None whatsoever. If Fetterman literally has this debilitating disease problem that he cannot cognitively put on a jacket and a tie but he can decide on policies and make decisions that affect 300 million people. I mean, this is laughable as what's going on with Dianne Feinstein. Literally, in her own private personal matters, she has signed over the power of eternity to her daughter because she does not have the mental cognitive ability to decide things for her own best self-interest. So her daughter does that for her. But she's perfectly fine sitting in the United States Senate deciding things on behalf of 40 million Californians on behalf of 300 million Americans. And then let's, let's, let's talk about the guy in the Oval Office. You know, the installed resident of the United States. That, that speech, so-called, that he gave at the UN a complete, total cognitive disconnect. You're going to lower the standard. Well, he's got a disability. You know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was a Democrat, had polio, crippled from the waist down, had to be in a wheelchair. But I don't seem to recall him wearing a tank top t-shirt and a pair of grungy sweatpants the day he stood before a joint session of Congress and declared war on Japan. In fact, every picture I've ever seen of FDR, he was wearing a suit and tie. And yeah, it's a big deal because it is a representation to the world that either we take what we do in that Congress seriously or we don't. We have dress codes in schools. We have dress codes, if you're on a team, how the uniform is to be worn. Shoot, in certain sports like basketball, you, you, have to, you are regulated on what color any of the undergarments are that might be exposed under the uniform. But here's a guy who's going to sit in the U.S. Senate and we're going to waive all that now. I mean, what's next? Nancy Pelosi showing up in the nude? <laughs> Nasty. I mean, and don't tell me that Fetterman doesn't know how to put on a suit and tie. He certainly doesn't mind dressing up for his special appearance on Dancing with the Stars. 
If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? It's just another evident sign that these neocon Democrats, these, these Liblu narcissists, for all of their talk, they really have no respect for the law, no respect for decorum, no respect for just normal, basic civility and decency. And some of you keep electing them. Why? This is my message to the, the, CEOs, the CEOs is, you know, at $74 million, you know, collectively earning that, you know, how many yachts can they need, you know, to, to, yacht, to water uh, ski behind it? You know, I mean, it's just crazy. Gentlemen, Ciccolini here may talk like an idiot and look like an idiot, but don't let that fool you. He really is an idiot.